Hey guys, welcome to our channel. Today we've got the uh, the rear end welded and we have the rotors turned and I've been working on the um, dual caliper setup on the rear of the IS300 and I'm going to show you guys what's up with the welded rear end then I'm going to show you what's up with just a glimpse of the turned rotors and then we're going to go look at the dual caliper setup. Let me kind of lay you out of what we're doing there. Alright, stay tuned. Here we go. All right, so we got the rear end welded up. The same guy did it last time on the 350Z. No big deal. He's got it locked in there good. We rolled the, the whole assembly. We spun it, welded both sides of it, so it's locked in good. This thing will be tight. Be ready to go drifting. And then I had him go ahead and turn the rotors. I opted to go ahead and turn the rotors because it's one of those things where while we got our hands on it, we're going to put new pads on it. We, we decided, we thought about maybe just going ahead and, and putting new rotors on it. The rotors weren't that bad, so we decided to just go ahead and have them turned. And maybe later down the road buy an aftermarket rotor brake set. But for now, entry level drifting. We just need something that, that works as a brake and, and the rotor. So when you have your rotors turned, it, it makes them not. So like if you've come up to a red light or a stop sign, you hit your brakes and it shakes. Okay, well that's a lot of, that's signs of a, a warped rotor. And that can be a lot of times just taken out by replacing your pads and turning your rotors. You don't have to spend a fortune. And if you get the lifetime warranty uh, brake pads, you know, as your rotor gets worse, turn it. Get a warranty on your pads if you got a warranty on that car. So if you plan on keeping that car for a while, hang on to your warranty stuff. But your rotors can only be turned so much because they have to be a certain thickness so they don't crack. So you have to keep that in mind too. You can only get away with so much. If they get so bad and distorted and damaged, you have to uh, discard them after they get so thin because they'll crack and, and be problems. All right, well, what we got on the rear caliper setup we've got them on there good and solid what I did is I'll bring you to the other side it's dark over here but maybe we can see I don't know if his light's plugged up if it is we'll no. okay so ultimately what I ended up having to do on the other side on the rear disc they're thicker and that's where your e-brake pads or your shoes rather live back here so when you have a caliper even though it's disc all the way around, you still have an e-brake inside that back. Well, having the second caliper, which will live somewhere in this area, all this is in the way. So you end up having to trim this, um, and there's like two bolts that go through the body of it right there. And you end up having to add a bolt, cut a bolt off, change a bolt out. So what we opted to do is... We're still gonna have an e-brake. All right, so you can spring load that e-brake with like a bungee cord or something on your actual e-brake handle that you pull back to, to do your drift. Well, I've saw them where they actually will run a, a bungee cord up or some type of mechanism to, so that way when you, you're done driving, you're parking your car, they'll pull a bungee from, I guess, maybe the harness bar or something, and they will actually hook it to the handbrake and just put tension on it and wrap their bungee around it and keep it engaged so that way you got an e-brake locked so your car don't roll that's where we're going to have to go with it and i understand why they do that now didn't make sense at the beginning of this whole ordeal but if you end up leaving some of these parts there's stuff just everywhere it's going to be a pain to even get the the brake shoes back on it so i think it's going to be easier completely do away with the internal e-brake and just use the second caliper as our e-brake so that's what I did over there so I actually cut that off discarded the whole you can see the mess I got here I've got tools drug out everywhere I'll clean my mess up in a minute but ultimately that's what I had to do to get this on that piece actually goes from one of the bolts right here over to it mounts on the back of this caliper so it actually will go from this caliper bolt because it sort of give you a longer caliper bolt and then it will go in part of the e-brake assembly you have to do away with one of the bolts but well, to me that's just 
insane the way it's set up. So I decided we'll go ahead and just discard the whole e-brake setup that's inside this piece. You know, it's, you can see how much thicker it is and the front rotors are way thin, uh, this piece. So, I think the rotor's still a little off. If I adjust it further in, I think it's this. Yeah, it's this and we're gonna change, it's actually this rotor making the noise. So we're actually going to change the pads on this. I went, and went ahead and waited to change the pads. So they're still tight and the mechanism still pushed in, but see, so there's no noise. I still need to change the pads on this one. So that's what's making your noise. But I think that's good. Now, once we do this, we have to run the lines, which will have our, our lines that will go to our second caliper. And then we'll go back and go under the car, back up to the e-brake. And we'll do that on both sides. But I'm gonna go ahead and mount the hardware and all the, the pieces. And we'll get all that installed. And then we can kind of see where the e-brake handle is gonna ultimately live. And so once I see all that, I'll know if the, the line's long enough or if I'm going to have to adapt it or add length to it. But it's, it was bought for this car, so it should fit. That's not always the case, so that's what we'll do. We'll go ahead and mount all the hardware and then plumb it with the line and see where everything has to live. I ordered a bracket for the e-brake so we don't have to weld it in place. And we're actually going to put it on the passenger side of the... Uh, so sitting on the driver's side like your shifter will be here it will be on the passenger side of the shifter so that way it's not in the way if you're not drifting that's not always the way they run them but sometimes it is so i've got to i guess tonight i'm gonna go ahead and finish cleaning out the rear diff and go ahead and rtv that so i need to make a decision on if we're going to Go ahead and change the boots out on that thing. Good lord, I zoomed us all in or something here. There we go. Much more better. All right, so I decided that, I don't even know what I'm talking about now. Good lord. Uh, the diff, yeah. I'm not sure if we're gonna change the bushings out on that diff or not. I don't know what we're gonna do there. So if we end up putting the hardened bushings in, we may end up finishing up everything we have here because i think we have all the parts to run the e-brake handle and all that well no we're waiting on one more piece of that but i can run the lines get them pretty close i kind of i know about where the e-brake's got to set i have to drill holes in that plate when it comes but i know roughly about where it's going to set and it's the odd one where you actually when your line comes in it has to horseshoe back to the um, e-brake handle or we're gonna to have to get a, a 90 and 90 it back because the we bought the style where the reservoirs in the back they make them where the reservoirs in the front and you actually put them under the dash or somewhere in the console we hide them but these when we got the, it will actually be in the back and so we have to get a 90 off 90 back tie into it so there's still some components we may not have just yet but I still can't find the hardened inserts for these IS 300s I have to look for that um, press in bushings and all that, see what we're gonna do there. But we can finish putting the front brakes on, put the new tires on the back, the old tires back on the front, the good ones that we had left over, and probably go ahead and start putting the steering wheel on if we end up having to order many more parts. So, all right, that's where we're at. So let's, uh, let's get something else going here. All right, so this right here, the ultra gray, it says high torque, rigid torque and high vibration applications, ideal for import and newer vehicles, sensor safe RTV silicone. And I get it with the, the actual coke gun. And so we go on with it. It's about half froze, I think. Dried up, there's a piece right there. Dried up. Oh, now we got it going. That's going to be way too much, and we'll probably end up having to wipe it off. But 
ultimately as long as it has some it's okay if you know it's squeezing out the edges and me personally I like to see you know anything that I've put RTV or any type of sealer or anything on I like to know that it's in there so I like to have it squish out a little bit this will probably be too much but I'd rather have too much RTV as a leak you know uh, back to where we started here and it's going to be way too much but that's all right you can always kind of spread it out a little bit and you see about where the silver is on the end of the or on the diff that's where your cover is going to cover get the so like this rusted out area, it's not going to sit there, so you can see pretty much where it's going to live. So you spread it out a little bit. You don't have to do this. I just like to do this myself to make sure I've got plenty of coverage and plenty of sealing area. I don't want any leaks. Like I said the last time I did this, you know, the the diffs are, are known to get hot under a lot of stress and, and drifting and stuff. But the thing is, you know, getting hot's one thing, but running out of fluid is an entirely different thing. So you don't want to leak and run out of fluid. It's entirely too much. And this thing has dowels. I don't think the last one I put on had like dowels on it to give you a resting place to actually install your cover so yep where's my dowels opposite corners all right yep all right so you can use thread locker and stuff on these I don't because for one there's enough RTV to get caught in it to seal it for the next 10 years but these things usually they generally once you get these things tied in there you don't usually have many issues with this that looks good to hunt my handy dandy Titan device around here somewhere. Let me go hunt something to tighten this with. Just like anything I do, I always try to use a crisscross pattern. And I don't go completely tight the, the first round. Then I'll go one more gain around it. That should be good. Now we'll let her set overnight. And see, when I even when I have the the gray silicone come out, unless it's like on an engine, and we're gonna, you know, it's something that's gonna be seen or it just stands out really really bad or there's just way too much of it I might clean it up but when it pushes out like this I usually don't mess with it because if you pull it in my mind I think you may be able you know may create a leak at least this way it's sealed and solid and I feel like it sealed better versus trying to clean it all out so and this being under the car and it being a drift car I'm not really concerned with it but if you are, I'm sure it's fine to trim it off. I'm not really concerned with it. I'd rather leave it alone and let it sit here and let it dry and cure overnight, 24 hours or at least 12 hours, 
and before we put any fluid in it and I did leave the the drain plug out of it so it would um, dry inside too just in case there's any more moisture from the cleaner or any of that stuff so I did leave the drain out of it overnight we'll leave that out and just let it air dry we'll heat it a little bit tomorrow try to move it put some fluid in it put some heat in it roll it around um, just kind of work it a little bit and then we'll flush it out one more time a little bit of just put some old oil or something and roll it around and maybe drain it just to get some of the more trash out of it once it starts being rotated we may get a little debris but so far so good on the welded diffs that we've done everything stayed together don't want to jinx it or anything but everything's going together pretty good on, on the, the drift stuff and maybe one day I'm going to sit down and do um, the things I've learned about getting into the drifting you know like a you know what little I've been into it I've learned quite a bit I've had to research and dig and dig and dig and find different things that work and things you don't need and you do need and all that so I may make a video of the things I figured out and kind of if you're getting into it maybe just like somebody that's just a little more into it than than what you are if you're just starting because we're not like really really into it yet and just kind of see some of the first things I've figured out that are do's and don'ts and you know that way you don't spend money you don't need to spend or things that you will need or just an idea of what you're looking at to get into this definitely a welded diff manual car rear wheel drive is the beginning so all right we'll go over a few things one day like that but this is the is 300 rear diff welded up sealed and i'm going to check on some bushings we may not put it in just yet, I may get some actual different bushings and change them out and see what we're doing there and finish putting the e-brake stuff in the steering wheel. It's late. We'll be back tomorrow to do some more. Thanks for watching, guys. All right, that's our video today. Um, appreciate you guys watching. If you will, um, subscribe to our channel. And if you see the little bell, hit the bell, and that bell will actually alert you that every time we post a video, you'll get to see that. You'll get an alert and let you know that, hey, you know, hey, these guys have posted another video. And if you want to follow us on Instagram at Chesser Drifting, we're on there. Um, we're on Facebook, Chesser Motorsports. And if you, for whatever reason, need to email us, it's Chesser Enterprises at Yahoo.com. If there's any questions you have or any information you'd like to share or maybe we're doing something right or doing something wrong just jump on there and give us a shout or you know thumbs up thumbs down whatever you do there and stay tuned we're going to be bringing more content we're getting ready to start setting the drift cars together and get them on the track it's cold weather we're about to get into some warm weather and get them get them out doing what we're going to do and doing some drifting all right thanks guys for following